Cropping photos is not just about splicing and dicing. It's also about rescaling the image canvas and repositioning the photo within the confines of the crop boundary so that we can make the best use of our space, both on the photo itself and on the canvas that we're working with. Using PowerPoint's crop tool, we can make major modifications to photos so that we can really make the best use of them. We can even reuse the same photo time and time again by using different areas of the canvas. In my opinion, learning how to leverage the crop tool correctly is one of the best cheat codes to mastering layout. Let's see how it's done. Using a full-size photo in the background is a nice way to fill a page, but sometimes the photos won't be exactly the right size when you insert them. In that case, you'll have to do a little adjusting with the crop tool in order to size them correctly. Let me walk you through it. So first, I need to find a photo that I wanna actually insert into my file. So I'm here at Pexels. The first thing I'm gonna do is come up to Filters and pick my orientation. I want it to be horizontal. So then at this point, I'm gonna just kinda of scroll through and find the photo that I like best. I really like this sort of glacial space photo here. So I'll go ahead and download that. Once I get back into PowerPoint, I'll come up to the Insert tab, then click Pictures and this device. And by default, this is going to bring up my Downloads folder. So I can double click to insert that photo that I just downloaded from Pexels. But as you can see, the photo isn't quite filling up the canvas, but I'm gonna show you how to fix that. Okay, so I'm gonna grab from the upper right hand corner of my photo and just drag my photo, extend the size right off the canvas like so. And I'll do the same on the bottom, just like I'm doing here. Perfect. And you can see I'm off the canvas, but I'm using these rulers to sort of guide me. So to turn rulers on and off, you can come up to view and toggle that. You can see now they're not there and it's a little bit harder to see where my canvas is. But if I click it back on, I can really start to make out where my canvas is and how much over the side I really am. Okay, so I'll click home and then back up to picture format. And that's where I'm gonna find that crop button. So I'll click crop and then just regular old crop here as well. And you can see I'm using those rulers to really line things up and see where my canvas is down below. I'm gonna grab the handlebar and bring it down from the top and you can actually see the canvas right below my photo. And I'm gonna edge it right up to the top and you can see a little red line will appear when I'm right at the edge of the canvas and that's when I can release it. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the bottom, bring it up, edge it right up to the red line and release. Pop it, perfect. And now it's time to actually crop it. So I can either click outside of the canvas or come back up to crop. Click that and it's gonna crop things into shape just perfectly like so. Another great way to use the crop tool is to crop your photos to shapes. This is a really great way to make your layouts stand out. The two most common shapes I use are squares and circles. That's what I'm gonna walk you through how to do in this video. That being said, think about other ways you can apply this technique to different shapes and different photos in the projects that you're working on. All right, let's dive in. Let's kick things off with squares. Here I have the same photo from my last video. I'll select it, come up to picture format, click crop, and then look at my options. Here's normal crop, I also have crop to shape, which you can play around with on your own. And here's aspect ratio. I'm gonna click one by one, which will give me that square. To actually crop the image, I can just click outside of the canvas and there it goes. At this point, I can resize the image and move it around on my screen to fit whatever layout needs I have. Okay, great. So now we have a perfect square. And this is the first step to creating a perfect circle. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna go ahead and click my photo here and then come up to picture format. From here, I'll click crop again. And instead of going over to aspect ratio, like I did before, I'm gonna to come to crop to shape and then pick oval. Because I already have that one by one ratio, this is gonna make that perfect circle for me. And voila, doesn't that look great? Now circles are especially great for profile pictures, so I'm gonna walk you through how to do that. We'll come up to pictures and insert a photo that I just downloaded again from Pexels. Okay, so at this point when we pop it in, we could make it the full slide size like we did in the last video, but instead we will rinse and repeat what we just learned. So we'll come up to crop, hit aspect ratio and do that square one by one. 
And now you can see things are a little off center. So what I can actually do is grab my photo and reposition things just like so to really get her in the center. I can either click crop or click outside of the canvas to crop it down, then come to crop to shape and click oval. That's gonna give me that circle like I had before. So just a quick word of caution here. You may be asking, Kathy, is it really that important that I do the one by one ratio first? And it is, and let me show you why. I'm gonna insert that photo one last time and show you what happens when we don't do that step first. So I'll click, come up to picture format, and then crop. And I'll just go straight to crop to shape this time and select that oval. Uh-oh. So that's what's gonna happen if we don't do the one by one ratio first. Instead, if we go ahead and do take that extra step just to make sure that it's perfectly square, I'll nudge it over, we're gonna get that perfect circle that we're looking for. So it's an important step to remember. I really wanna go all in and talk about the many different ways that we can zoom in and reposition a photo while cropping to give it a totally different effect. This is especially useful when you're adding extra elements like a text box on top of the photo itself. You'll be blown away by the different ways that we can really recycle and reuse the same photo, which is really useful if you're working with only a small library. Let's see how it's done. So I'll start by going ahead and inserting one of the photos that I've downloaded. So again, I grabbed this from Pexels, but you can choose your own. And as you can see on this photo, there's a lot of open space that I can really make use of. So I'm thinking, how can I actually use this maybe for some type of text? So I will click to select the photo, come to picture format, of course, crop, and I'm gonna crop it down to a one by one, just like we did in our last lesson. And I'm gonna reposition it just by clicking and dragging. Just nudging it over gives me a little bit more canvas space over here. And it's a perfect place for me to go ahead and maybe add a text box of some kind. So I'll drop some text in. Great, so that's one approach. Let's go ahead and see a few other ways that we can use the same photo and reposition it to really make good use of the space. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new slide and just rinse and repeat the same process again, inserting that same photo just like I did before. So what I'm gonna do is I'll hit crop and then aspect ratio, one to one, and I'll nudge it just a bit over to the right to center it. And then I'm actually gonna start zooming in. So I'll grab that corner just like I've done before and just reposition it, just clicking and dragging the photo itself to put it exactly on the canvas where I'd like it. All right, that looks just about perfect right there. I wanna keep the top part of the photo really clear so I can add some text. So I'll grab that same text box and go ahead and paste it on in. Let's hit center justification and we'll position the text right in the center of our photo. Increase the size just a tad and nudge it, placing it perfectly. I'm gonna go ahead and line these photos up just so I can see how they really look side by side. As you can see, that's a big difference. So let's do one more. I'll go ahead and insert the same photo, rinsing and repeating just like I have. For this example, I'm actually gonna use a part of the photo that the astronauts aren't in. And let me show you what I mean. So first I'll crop it down just like I have before. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in, grabbing from the corners, and just clicking to drag over to that side of the photo that the astronauts aren't in. And I'm gonna line it up just like so. Click outside of the canvas to crop it down, and now, see, I've created an entirely different look. I can paste the same text on, but see, it's just a little bit different, right? The experience as the end user is quite different as we scroll through. Quite interesting, right? Quick word of caution as you're zooming in on your photos. It's very important that you select a very high resolution photo so that your photos don't wind up pixelated as you're zooming in. Take a look at these two photos, which at first glance look quite a bit the same, but you can see that the resolution has really made a big difference as we've zoomed in. This is one of the telltale signs that you really actually don't know what you're doing when you're working with graphics, so you want to avoid that. You're more likely to encounter this problem if you're using Google to find your images, which I really don't recommend doing. As I'm hovering over one of these photos, you can see the actual size down in the lower left-hand corner. It's very small. So not only are you really putting yourself at copyright risk when you're searching for images like this on Google, you're also just really not likely to get the highest quality images, which isn't great. Let's take a peek at a couple of other resources I like to go to to find my high quality graphics.
So let's start over on raw pixel, which is a resource I really like to go to. And as you can see, both small and large photos are quite a bit larger than those that we just saw on Google. We also have the option to download the file size that works best for us, so that's perfect. Pexels is another great place to go to find those high res photos. On each photo, I can click more info and actually see the dimensions of the file size, which is perfect. With a file this high res, I know I won't encounter any issues as I'm zooming in. Okay, so there you have it. A couple of pro tips to avoid any kind of zooming issues just by downloading the highest resolution photos possible. One thing I really wanna go over is how to rotate and flip images. Now, technically this is not a crop feature, but I do find myself using these features a lot while I am cropping. Usually I do this to figure out how I can position text on an image to really get the effect I'm going for. I also tend to do this if a model in one of the photos is facing the wrong direction. So rotating and flipping images will really open a lot of doors for us so that we can really customize our layouts. It's not tricky at all. Let me show you how. All right, so I'll start with a photo which I downloaded from Pexels, just like I've been doing. I've gone ahead and inserted it here onto my PowerPoint slide. So as you can see, there's a person in the lower right-hand corner of the photo, but I can really easily flip the image so that that person appears on the other side. So I'm gonna click to select my photo, come up to arrange, and then go to rotate. Here I have some options. I'll go ahead and cycle through them just so you can see what they look like, but we're really going after flip horizontal. That's actually gonna flip the entire image right on the horizon line. And of course, we can combine this with what we already learned about cropping. So I can again click to select my photo, come up to picture format, come to crop, and I'm gonna do that one by one square aspect ratio. Nudge my photo over to the right just a tad, and then click out to crop. Beautiful. And once we've already cropped, that doesn't mean we're locked in. If for whatever reason I decided I wanted to go back, I could come back up to arrange, click rotate, and again, flip horizontal to switch it back to that original orientation. Here I have a photo of a person, and I'm gonna combine a few of the tricks that we already learned. So first, I'll go ahead and click to select the photo, come up to picture format, click crop, and I'm gonna crop it down to that one by one square aspect ratio to begin with. Then I'll just nudge a little bit to get it dead center. Looks good. Okay, click out to crop it. Okay, and now I want it in a perfect circle. So I'll crop to shape, pick oval, and it'll crop it down to that perfect circle that we learned about. Now, maybe if I was using this as a profile photo, I may wanna actually zoom in just a little bit. So I'll come back up to crop, and again, extend from the corners to really zoom in and then reposition just like we learned about. Click outside of the canvas to crop it in. Perfect. Now I'm gonna scale it down just a little tiny bit. No need to hold down shift as you're rescaling photos. It'll maintain the aspect ratio on its own. Now, if I'd like to rotate it, I can actually hover at the top and you see this little rotation icon that appears and I can just move it ever so slightly left and right to get it positioned exactly as I'd like it. All right, so this is looking really good, but let's go ahead and stretch ourselves and see if we can combine this with what we just learned about flipping. So I'll come up to home and I'm gonna go ahead and click arrange just like I did before. Click rotate and then flip horizontal. And you can see my model has actually flipped to look the other direction. I'm going to rotate it just ever so slightly back and forth to get it exactly up and down like I'd like it, and that looks excellent. 